What's up, everybody? Welcome to After the Final Whistle, a football talk with John and Montel. Uh, welcome to episode four of After the Final Whistle. I'm Montel. Our co-host is John. How are you doing today, John? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, how about you, sir? Uh, not too bad, man. Uh, been an interesting week. Uh, we're doing some, I guess, interesting stuff in my job this week, so. It's been a, a good week. It's gone by uh, pretty fast. So um, I guess I'll uh, kind of kick us off this week talking about kind of where the podcast is available. Uh, we've got ourselves up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast. And uh, there's some other platforms out there that aren't quite as popular, but those are probably the main ones. Um, if you know one you want us to get put up on, uh, let us know and we'll look into getting it put up. I, I've got no problem. It's usually just uh, signing up for an account and adding an RSS feed. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll kick it off, uh, like we normally do, John, what you got for the injury report this week? Uh, so, uh, you know, we, uh, have, uh, DJ Chark this week, uh, looks like it's, uh, out for the season, broken ankle, it looks like. And then, uh, the Alvin Kamara's backup got carted off the field. Um, I don't remember in many other injuries this week, um, but uh, looks like Christian McCaffrey may be back this week. Um, he's been practicing. Uh, Chris Carson uh, out with a, apparently a chronic neck injury, which I have not heard of. Uh, McCaffrey had a, a hamstring, right? Yes, hamstring. Um, looks like Julio Jones is questionable. To come back this week, it sounds like AJ Brown should be back, and uh, Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard sound like they're still not practicing with hamstrings. So what you're saying is start AJ Brown and not Julio in fantasy this week. Gotcha. <laughs> As of right now, yes. Okay, I guess I'll hold you to that. He's he's starting this week. I, I wrote it down. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that, that's what I have for the injury side of things. Uh, what do you have for the news? Well, I guess we'll kick it off with the hot topic for uh, this week. Urban Meyer's an idiot. Uh, did you hear about him getting caught at that bar in Ohio after they lost? Partying with, uh, I'm assuming it was a college girl. I don't know. She looked around uh, like early 20s. Uh, you hear anything about that? In the news, I, I I did I did. Um, what makes it even more crazy? I don't know if you heard, but I' pretty sure I heard that it was his own bar. What he an owns idiot! That I, bar. That. What what, <laughs> what pisses me off about it though is like, uh, sorry, I mean to cut you off. What pisses me off is though he's been married since like the nineteen eighties. Like, what? Is it worth it? You know what I mean? Is, is it worth losing everything for uh, a moment of pleasure, I guess we can call it. But uh, sorry, I mean, Coach, I'll go ahead and continue. And, and what I don't understand is, like, the team flew back and he stayed behind. Like, you're the head coach. You should lead by example. And is that the example you want to lead by? Right. Yeah, it, it's dumb to me, dude. Like, um, for instance, like you wouldn't see, I'll say, uh, Mike Zimmer, Bill Belichick. I mean, uh, the the Packers coach uh, Lafleur, Matt Lafleur, he's in his early thirties. That's and he doesn't pull crap like this. So why does a guy, I'm assuming, in his late sixties, mid sixties, think something like this is okay? It, it, it's just to me. Um, you're supposed to be a leader of men, but you're acting like a child. Uh, unacceptable for me. And I hope the league uh, maybe finds them. I don't know. It's just if it was a player partying like that, they'd probably throw a fit. So uh, I, I just I wasn't happy reading about that, especially after a loss. It just made zero sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it it's completely and utterly stupid and uncalled for, and. Uh, I mean, I'm sure we could spend a ton of time on this subject, but it's been covered by 
anyone and everyone, uh, if you want it, just uh, search for it. I guess he just thinks he can get away with it because he's, you know, was Ohio State's coach for so long. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this, and I'll, I'll leave it alone. Um, you're coaching the dumpster fire of the NFL. Anything you do is going to be put on us in like a spotlight. So to me, it just yeah, like I said, it's just stupid. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'm not gonna get no soapbox about that. I just I I figured it was the most popular thing for the week, and I figured we put in our our two cents and throw our hat in the ring. So. Uh, next, I'll, I guess I'll talk a little bit about uh, the Patriots. Apparently, we're going to release Stephon Gilmore, and they opted to trade him to the Panthers for a six-round pick. Uh, that's from uh, Tom Pelissero. He's a, a, a credentialed, uh, pretty pretty well-known media person. Uh, person. So, uh, Ian Rappaport, I'm sure everybody's heard of the Ian Rappaport. Uh, he said that the Patriots were open to giving him a raise, uh, which, uh, Stephon Gilmore, before they traded him. But he went on the, the pup list instead. Of what I understand, it sounded like uh, he didn't intend to play for the Patriots again without any new money. Uh, thought, thoughts on that? I, I just couldn't believe they, they flipped so quick from, hey, we're going to cut this guy. To, I mean, he turned the pig. Why the hell not? You know, I mean, it's, it's in uh, two, it's in a, won't be this year's draft. It'll be the uh, next year's draft where they get that uh, pick. But uh, interesting. They, uh, they managed to turn something. For him when he has like one year on his deal. Yeah, I mean, as crazy as this kind of sounds to say, it's like a, a step up for Gilmore this year. Um, I, I don't see the Patriots making it to the playoffs. If they do, it'd probably be wild card. But you are going to what looks like a playoff team this year and the Panthers. Um, solid defense. Sam Darnold is playing lights out. Uh, once McCaffrey's back, I mean, there's a lot of weapons on that offensive side. Um, and it fits with the needs for the Panthers because them losing um, J.C. Horn and I think another cornerback got injured. So, yeah, I think they've also been two on their depth chart. Yeah, so um, good fit. Um, Six-round pick, so that's not going to okay. take – talent away from the draft necessarily because it's kind of hard to find someone in those later rounds that'll right i was gonna say nobody name a six round pick that's panned out that that's not tom brady right i guess uh moving on i got some uh some packers news here for you uh, Jalen Smith got cut by the Cowboys October 6th. October 6th. Today is October 7th, and it looks like they actually finalized the deal. Uh, thoughts on that? Have you seen him play with the Cowboys at all? I have seen seen him play with the Cowboys. Um, he was pretty good. I mean, got out of position in coverage of, from time to time, but, I mean, solid run stopper. Um, can cover running backs out of the backfield um, and then just goes with the other Smith brothers in that linebacker room. Um, so Darius might be coming back in the next couple weeks. So, you know, I, I think it's a good fit. Um, definitely signing him for one year. I didn't hear how much the contract was for, but I would guess that minimum. I did. I didn't either. Um, I guess to me, uh, after he had that that really bad knee in, injury at, at Notre Dame, I never thought he'd amount to nothing. Uh, but when the Cowboys drafted him in like the second round a few years ago, uh, he actually had like a I guess you can call it a red shirt year because he didn't play. He played lights out, and I think that knee is finally starting to catch up to him. He looks uh, to me. A step or two slow in the run game, you know, based on some – I was watching a couple Cowboy games this year. Not a, not entire games, but I've watched enough of them where uh, I, I can see he's, he seems to be out of position. Uh, he's not shedding blocks too well. I guess part of the, the reason why he got cut is I guess the uh, Cowboys are stacked at linebackers. So, uh, I think it'll 
it'll be a good fit for Green Bay. I mean, I I think you also run it three four, don't you? So he'll probably end up playing the uh, the will linebacker with you know, us weak side. So right. Yeah. I mean, if he can just be like uh, Campbell has been. I mean, Campbell's been solid so far this year. The Devondre or which game? Yeah, Devondre Campbell. Um, oh, okay. He's been pretty pretty good for us in the the middle of that field this year. He's a. I think, I think part of the problem is he just might be out of shape. I think if he can get back to being Jalen Smith of maybe like two years ago. You know, running right. sideline to sideline and uh, knocking the piss out of people. I think it'll be a. A good pick for the Packers. Good pickup, sorry, not pick. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know what they say, change of scenery. So maybe this is what he needed. Yeah. And uh, speaking of change of scenery, uh, <laughs> I think Jamie Collins just might be cursed. So I want, I want you to listen to me for just a second while I talk about uh, his career path, okay? Okay. Drafted by the Patriots in 2013. Traded to the Browns in 2016 for a third-round pick. Signs a four-year, $50 million deal with the Browns in 2017. Cut by the Browns in 2019. Resigns with the Patriots in 2019 uh, for the vet minimum. Signs a three-year, $30 million deal with the Lions in 2020. Cut by the Lions four games into the 2021 season. And uh, guess where he ended back up? I'm going to guess the Patriots. Indeed. So is he cursed? Or you, do you think Bill Belichick is just playing like some kind of 5D chess here? He, there's no way uh, Belichick is that good. But when, when this kind of crap happens, it, it just it blows my mind. Uh, I would think it's more – familiarity with the, the defensive scheme than probably anything else. Go in and he knows what he's doing so he can just start playing right away. But man, I don't know. Sometimes it makes you wonder with especially with the checkered past the Patriots have had and the past checkered, huh? You wanna rephrase that to be a little more true? <laughs> with, with what the has come out against them from the filming at practices of other teams to the deflating of the footballs to I think there's been a few other issues but I can't think of them off the top of my head no just just being really good at bending the rules enough to piss people off but not actually get in trouble for it super annoying Anyway, speaking of uh, the Patriots, uh, I, I guess you probably know Brady returned home this this uh, past week, won an ugly game against the Patriots, nineteen to seventeen. He has now beaten all of the uh, NFL teams. So I've got a random trivia question for you, John. Can you name okay. the other three quarterbacks who have beaten all thirty-two teams? Oh, jeez. Um... I wish I could think I can, of one. I can tell you the last team that they played for. How about that? Okay. One of them last played for the Saints. One of them last played for the Broncos. And one of them last played for the Minnesota Vikings. So, I'm going to guess... Drew Brees, Peyton Manning. That's Brett correct. Favre. That is correct. Yep. Tom Brady, those four. Brady, Brees, Manning, Favre. Only quarterbacks in the NFL history to beat all 32 teams. You have to have some kind of some, – some dumb luck for it to happen, honestly. You have to go somewhere where that team plays your, your first team. So – uh, Favre had a couple shots at it. Uh, I think Brady had uh, – this is his first one. I think Manning had one shot before he uh, retired. So, uh, pretty impressive. I mean, you got the the Steve Youngs and Joe Montana's of the world, and they haven't beaten 
every team, primarily because they played for one team most of their career and never got lucky enough. Still right. a cool tribute. Yeah. Um, and then we also can't forget that uh, Tom Brady broke the all time passing yards record in that game, too. That's right. I think uh, Drew Brees was actually there to congratulate him, too. Yes, I think he was. That's good stuff. I, as much as I hate the Saints, I, I really can't hate Drew Brees. So, um, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just a random, random trivia. I, I told you we'd have it towards like the the pre show we do, and uh, I told you you get it, you got it. It didn't even didn't hesitate. <laughs> right, I just couldn't think of any off the top of my head because uh, I wasn't expecting it to be that many players. Yeah, I I was like, there, there's no way, and then I I thought about it, and I'm like, yeah, it was a big deal when Peyton beat the Colts. A big deal. Uh, Favre got booed out of the building in Green Bay. Oh, my God. And uh, <laughs> Br- Breeze beat the charge, I, I think, in his, like, third or fourth year playing against the uh, – playing with the Saints. And I'm sure he's beaten them multiple times now. But uh, right. any, anywho, I figured it'd be, it'd be an interesting thing for you for us to give a shot. So, uh, moving on, uh, how did your uh, fantasy team do this week? And uh, oh. I'm I'm gonna make a request here. Let's talk about the free league first before I get too triggered here. All right. So in the in the free league, uh, I ended up losing again this time, pretty handedly. So, you know, congrats to my opponent. Um, I think it's you and I this week in the free league. So we'll see how that turns out. And then in the money league, um, uh, I'm sorry, not sorry that my team gave you the hands. So, what so you bad. mean the hands? I got my ass whipped. Ain't no hands. <laughs> Only, I, I wanted to commit a homicide. I got murdered. Ain't don't, don't sugarcoat that. I got my ass. Whipped. I mean, you're right. You're right. My team went off. Uh, thank you. Could have been a little bit worse if uh, I played the right defense, but, you know, who would have thought um, the Titans would have lost to the Jets? Uh, yeah, and my defense <laughs> gave uh, – they, they had negative five, and they are now on waivers. I, I'm done with it. Utter, utter garbage. <laughs> like, like uh, me, dude, I, I will cut in and everybody if, if you piss me off enough. And that – the negative five to, to get me under 100 for, like, the, the better half of, like, uh, Sunday, I was kind of pissed about. It. I was like, "Oh yeah, they're definitely." I'm dropping. I'm dropping this, this shitty defense. Sorry, uh, it's a mature podcast, and I'm going to say shitty. It, it's a shitty defense. The Rams defense is garbage. Yeah, they are definitely not what they were last year. But uh, you know, once again, Monday night, Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, yes, I am. Fairly irritated. Uh, I guess I'll I'll talk a little bit about our, our matchup this week before I, I uh, go into my scores. We're actually score like our projected scores. I'm projected to get one twenty one point one six. John is projected to get one twenty one point oh five. So uh, pretty pretty darn close. Hopefully it's closer than the league with the money in. You know, I uh, hopefully I get this win. But you know, I, I'm not a selfish person. If I lose, I lose. I mean, we we shall see. Uh, usually, you know, that's kind of how our scores turn out is what that projected is. So, right. the fact that pretty, it was one sided as it was. Triggered. Absolutely triggered. Uh, let's see. Um, I guess my scores. I lost in both leagues. Obviously, I lost in the money league. The other one, I lost ninety four point seven to one oh. Sorry, one sixteen point one. Uh, the guy's three and one on one and three, so it was pretty close. And then uh, his team absolutely uh, went off at every position I uh, did not, so I, I lost. Yeah, so uh, hopefully, you know, you have better luck this week in the money league. <laughs> yeah, I've got Kalosha, or as it says in the in the name, Godot. Hold on. 
the Dodo Fredo Valquez, which is complete bullshit. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's got to be close. Shit, so, yeah, I, I don't think he's uh, he's two and two. So yeah, I got a chance to beat him. I got a chance to beat everybody, but you know my team just doesn't do what they're supposed to. Yeah, I just I look, do it week to week and try to manufacture the win that week and move on. No, I, I usually just just cry in sorrow because uh, you know I'm up and then I lose. So, moving on, we're gonna go talk about our predictions from last week. Uh, we'll follow the same format. Uh, your last week record was two and one. Overall, it's six and two. Uh, you predicted the Cowboys would beat the Panthers twenty eight to twenty four. Uh, they won 36 to 28. You predicted the Rams would beat the Cardinals 24 to 17. Uh, they lost 20 to 37. Uh, you predicted the Packers to beat the Steelers 21 to 10. Uh, they won 27 to 17. Uh, my overall record for last week was 0 and 3. Uh, it looks like I'm regressing here. I was, uh, I think, 3 and 0. And no, 2 and 0 because we only did two games the first week. And then. One and two, and now zero and three this week for an overall record of three and five. I predicted 49ers would beat the Seahawks twenty-seven to seventeen. They lost twenty-one to twenty-eight. I predicted the Raiders would have a uh, four and zero start. Uh, they beat the Chargers thirty-one to twenty-eight. They lost twenty-four to twenty-eight. I predicted the Vikings would beat the Browns thirty-one to fourteen. They lost seven to fourteen. Uh, and Cleveland pretty much. Beg them to take the game. Baker was terrible. It was terrible. But I guess he's hurt, so I can't really be uh, too hard on him. Yeah. He's you excited about those? Better. I I am. I am. Uh, you know, can't complain being up uh, by like four games on you. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess back back to Baker being hurt. Uh, what's he got going on? Uh, I, in his non-throwing shoulder, he's playing with like a partially torn labrum. It's weird. You would you wouldn't think that have much to do with it, but I never played quarterback, so uh, yeah. I, yeah, so, I'm just trying know. to think of why does it matter? You know, you, you get your power from your hips and your throwing arm. So I I don't know. He he I, he, he missed so many receivers in that game. I. If I was Odell Beckham Jr., me and him probably would have had to fight that locker room as many times as he over or under three, over three. <laughs> and I could see you doing that too. I mean, I just I don't wake up and choose violence. It just tends to find me. And uh, yeah, I definitely would have, would have had to kick his ass for, for that piss poor performance. Uh, let's talk about uh, your predictions for, I guess, this week, the week of the, uh, what is it, the 9th, 10th? Yeah, the 10th. Um, you've got Colts at Ravens, Browns at Chargers, and Packers at Bengals. Where do you want to start? Uh, I'm going to start uh, at the beginning, Colts at Ravens. Uh, I'm going to take the Ravens in this one. Um, Quentin Nelson out. I think he was put on IR uh, last week. Again? Week yeah. Damn. Um, so I'm saying Ravens are going to get the win in this one. Um I don't think it'll be that close. I'm going to say it's going to be like 24 to 10. Damn. Because, um, I mean, the Colts still have a pretty solid defense. Um, I just don't see their offense doing too much. Nope. Um, Lynch is washed. Right. And then uh, Browns at Chargers. I'm going to say Browns are going to end up winning. Um because Miles Garrett, I'm sure, is going to be playing even more pissed off than normal after what happened last week. I don't know if you heard what happened with him. The random drug test for wearing no uh, <laughs> shirt or no uh, undershirt? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, hold on. No, I'm sorry. Let me, let me, we got to talk about that. So the, Justin Tucker kicks like a 66-yard field goal, doesn't get randomly drug tested. But Miles uh, Miles Garrett is just absolutely freaking jacked. I mean, it feels like, nah, fam, <laughs> nah. <laughs> we need the receipts. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so I'm gonna say the Browns win this one. Um, 
I feel like it's going to be a more defensive game. So I want to say like 17 to 14. 17 Browns, uh, 14 yeah. Chargers. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, yeah, I forgot to talk about this one in the news. Jair Alexander with a shoulder injury. I may be out this week, more than likely will be out this week. Um, Packers versus the Bengals. Uh, you want to go with the Don't Packers sleep versus... on the Bengals. I'm, I'm not, but Joe Mixon with the possibly being out. Um. But I mean, I gotta go with my team. You know that. So Packers. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna say uh, twenty-eight, twenty-four, because the Bengals are still probably going to put up quite a few points. I could see it. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna apologize, but I, I like probably every other football fan wrote them off prior to week one. So uh, they're they're doing good. I mean, I'll give them credit. Their coach isn't. Trash is I like the hope, but yeah, I'll give them credit there. The Lions of the AFC, I'll say that. Right, right. Mine is still, mine is still in the kneecaps, as Man Campbell would say, or Dan Campbell would say. <laughs> so, so those are my predictions this week. Uh, what do you? What are yours? I've got uh, Bills at Chiefs, Bears at Raiders, and. Vikings at Lions. Um, this Bills Chiefs game, man, you remember how we were uh, kind of like on the fence or about the Chargers and the uh, Chiefs playing a couple weeks ago? Right. I'm really on the fence about this. One, uh, because Pat Mahomes isn't like the first in the AFC West, like the first time in like three seasons. So I, I get a feeling he's going to be pretty pissed off about that and have a, a a better game than what people probably anticipate. But Josh Allen, uh, he's still playing like an MVP candidate too. Man. I want to say Bills, but my gut is telling me Chiefs. Um, so I'll go Bills will have, I'll say 28. The Chiefs will have 31. I could see that happening, especially, I mean, like you said, Mahomes playing upset. I mean, I'm... also, didn't Andy Reid go to the hospital after the loss last week? Or was that the week before? Uh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Um, like, he ended up having to go to the hospital after, I think it was last week's loss. Let me see. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, it says baby. nine days ago. So that I guess that would have been the week before last, or last week technically. Yeah, so the week of the twenty oh. six. Okay, so I mean they probably going to be playing for their coach still, try to get that win for him. But that defense, I don't know what's going on with it. The Chiefs defense is garbage. They gave up. They gave they after what happened to Mahomes in the Super Bowl. They they kind of took the approach of never again, and they pretty much just like surrounded them with a bunch of offensive linemen. Uh, they traded for for Zeus, and then they signed Joe Tooney in free agency. Uh, they cut their two starting tackles because they. Uh, I don't. I think I don't think either one of them actually played the Super Bowl, and uh, they were uh, cap casualties too. So. Yeah, I, I think the Chiefs uh, will pull it out. I think it'll be another shootout. I think every time I've seen these two play, it's usually been a, a shootout between the two court, young quarterbacks. So I, I like their prediction, 31-28. Uh, Bears at Raiders. I think the Bears uh, are worse than what their record says they are. Uh, let me go look. I'm pretty sure they're like 2-2. Two and two. Uh, Yeah, they're 2-2. Two two and two. Two. And the Raiders are are three and one. I uh, I'm I'm gonna stay stay on the Raiders. Uh, I guess bandwagon. Um, man, Justin Fields hasn't looked great. 
So I'll say 17 Bears. Uh, Raiders will. Uh, I'll go with 27. Okay, and uh, also uh, in on the injury front, uh, I just do this whenever we talk about teams and. It's a major one that could potentially affect the outcome. Um, David Montgomery out. Should be on IR, but he, he's out at least probably, I'd say, four to six weeks. Okay, so you just, you're going to change my score. <laughs> Bears 10, <laughs> Raiders 27. And, you know, Justin Fields is the starter again. So I don't know if that'll affect your score either. Nope, nope. I, I'm I'm aware. I think he'll count for a touchdown and they'll get they'll score a field goal. Their car's the vet. Uh, I won't say I have. The, I, I speak as highly as him as I do Matt Stafford, but uh, I think if he was anywhere else, people would give him a little bit more credit. So, um, last one. I yeah yeah. I, uh, I I'll say this. Uh, I would trade. For Derek Carr as a Vikings fan, and give up Kirk Cousins. <laughs> it is what it is. I would I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, speaking of Vikings, they're playing the Lions this week. I don't think the Lions have a win yet. Do they? They're zero and four. They are zero and four, but up until well, even last week they were still in. I would say still in the game. I mean. They they played the Bears pretty solid, but I mean that Bears defense just kind of shut down the running game, so they forced Goff to throw, and they don't really have outside of Hawkinson and uh, their running backs. They really don't have like a wide receiver doing much of anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I honestly. The only person or people I can tell you that are on the Lions team are Benay Sewell and I was and Jared Goff. Can't name another player on the roster. Uh, so I'm gonna go Vikings 34, Lions 14. I'm I'm still sipping that purple Kool-Aid after that Seahawks win, but uh, they played the Browns tough last week, man. They lost by seven and they had every opportunity to win the game. Um, just got manhandled up front. So I don't think the Lions have that capability anymore to manhandle anybody up front. So I think they have the edge in the trenches. So they'll they'll win 34-14 is my prediction. Uh, right. Now what what are you gonna what would happen if uh the Bears got their first or not Bears, but the Lions got their first win against if the, the 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 Lions get their first win against the Vikings, I'm gonna be perfectly honestly. I said it last week. Uh, Kevin Stefanski should be the head coach of the Vikings anyway. And I think um, if they drop this one at home to the Lions, somebody probably gets fired at the end of the season. Yeah, I could see if that the, happening. If the, if the Lions go 1-16 and, and their one win was against the Vikings at home, I don't think I think they fired the coach in the GM. That that's right. that's my uh, my hot take. Um, Detroit is uh, kind of like the Jags are. You know, they're in a perpetual state of rebuild. It seems like so. Uh, the the Vikings have some stability, at least like in the head coach and in their front office. So uh, hopefully they don't lose, but. I'll, I'll have to watch the game, and I'll watch every single week. And goodness gracious, I, I'm pretty sure I've had more, like, panic attacks in the last four weeks than I have in my entire life, just watching this team, like, piss away something. Yeah. Um, before we get out of talking about games, um, this is also the first weekend for the London games. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to um, – apologize the people over in London to send you all they, uh, the, the they Jets getting? versus the Falcons. Oh my god. They couldn't give them something better. They could have like put the Bills Chiefs or something over there. They could have done something, but yeah, they're getting the Jets and Falcons 
first London game for this year. Um, at least it isn't like the Jags versus the Lions. Like the, the Jags played so many home games there at some point. They might have might as well just been like the, the London Jaguars. Gee. <laughs> that that is true. Um I also saw today that uh Calvin Ridley did not fly to London with the team due to personal matters. So I don't know what's going mm-hmm. on there. So you're already without your wide receiver one for the Falcons. And Russell Gage, last I saw, was still dealing with his injury. Um, I'm not sure what his was since that happened quite a – like week one. Um, so Mike Davis and Kyle Pitts with Cordero Patterson is – who the Falcons have on the offensive side for weapons. And then you have like Corey Davis, Jamison Crowder, um, maybe Elijah Moore if he clears concussion protocol, and Michael Carter on the Jets side. So it's like the Jets could be winning again. Yeah, Crowder and uh, Davis are, are pretty underrated, man. Um, I know Corey Davis had a was a good season, maybe it was like two years ago in uh, Tennessee, and Jamison Crowder is like he's a Hall of Fame like slot receiver some days, and he's just like a dude that shouldn't be in the league others. So, yeah, uh, you want to do a bonus just, prediction? Uh, yeah, that's what I was about to say. Just for funsies, let's just think who you know. This will be. For both of us, nah, I'm I, I'm going to go with the Jets. And, and it just spot. feels weird saying. <laughs> yeah, and, and this time, uh, okay, hold on. Uh, let's see, bonus prediction. What what you thinking score wise? Uh, seven to fourteen. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I still put them both on equal grounds, but you know, talent wise, but just there's not much there. No, I was gonna say, I'm with you. Jets a little bit more healthy. I'll give them a little bit more credit than 14. <laughs> not by much, though. I'll give them, uh, I'll say it'll be 21 to. You know what? Screw it. This this has like the the capability of being one of those games where it's like stupid close. I'm gonna say Jets twenty one, Falcons twenty. M- missed field goal. <laughs> Probably. I well, mean, I, I, I'm, I, I missed field I goal. <laughs> wide le- wide left. I'm gonna call it wide left. <laughs> I mean, I could see this playing out any number of ways. I could even see it being a shootout. But it just depends because, I mean, you got Zach Wilson. You got a bunch of younger guys uh, flying across the sea to play different time frame, different country. So we'll see how it turns out. I uh, I hope for the, the people that paid to go see that game, not a shit show. I mean, like they could have. I I've thought, thought about this the other day. Seems like almost every team that goes over to London is a team for the most part that's has a losing record or middle or lower end team in the NFL. Yeah. Uh it's I feel like it's kind of punishment for being a bad franchise. You know what I mean? Um you don't see uh, the Steelers or like the Seahawks go over there very often because they're pretty popular teams. It's usually those kind of like you said, those bottom of the league where one quarterback blowing his ACL out from being a dumpster fire kind of team. So, yeah, like the Packers have never gone over there. Minnesota uh, went a few, a few years ago. I, I, when I say a few, I think Percy Harvin was still on the team. No. Oh, so, one of the the first few years of going over there. Yeah, yeah. They were they were bitching about how bad the field was. So 
So to our to our uh, London listeners, uh, we apologize about the games you guys get, but we appreciate you guys uh, supporting the teams going over there. Yep, and we hate Roger Goodell just as much as you do. I promise. <laughs> So I guess uh, that that's pretty much going to wrap up this episode. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and, like I, I say every week, leave a voicemail. And if you want to send an email, our email is after the final whistle podcast at gmail.com, all one word. Uh, John, you got anything else you want to bring up or you good to go for this episode? Uh, I'm good to go. I don't have anything else. So until next week, everybody, take care. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Peace.